My print shop is dull and boring. There are very little decorations on the wall, and the ones that I have, I can't stand. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use AI to create Halloween decorations to decorate my print shop. Keep watching to see how it happens. Let's start out by going to ChatGPT. I need some ideas for my Halloween decorations. I could probably come up with them myself, but this is an AI video, so I need to probably use AI a little bit. Write me a list of 20 Halloween objects. Some examples would be pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, skull. Now that we have our list, we need to go to Midjourney, which you use Discord for this currently. And to use Midjourney, you need to use the imagine prompt. So you do a backslash, forward slash, one of the slashes. <laughs> uh, and then you type imagine, and then it's gonna have you write your prompt. So now I need to come up with a prompt that will give me the right type of image that I'm looking for for my decorations. And I want a simple vector style illustration of a pumpkin. No gradients or shadows on a white background. All right, let's just see what this does. Actually, I'm going to use these brackets. And inside of there, you can put multiple things separated by a comma, and it will generate those prompts over and over again so you're not like retyping it. So what I want is a jack-o'-lantern, a skull, a witch's broomstick, and a ghost. I think you can do four. No gradients, shadows, or highlights. They added highlights on that, so I wanna see if I can Take that out and you say yes because it's gonna generate the four different prompts. And these pumpkins aren't horrible. I'd be able to color them however I want. This one isn't bad. This one has a weird stall. Let's see if I can regenerate that. Okay, these pumpkins came out a lot better. This one I think looks really good. And once I take out some of these shadows and gra gradients, then it'll look even better. So let's upscale number one. We're gonna go with that one. Here's the pumpkin. Okay, so this is the pumpkin that I liked. So I'm going to open it in the browser. Okay, once it's large in the browser, you can save the image. We'll just save it to my downloads. I'm gonna call it pumpkin, All right? Go back here. Ooh, nice, okay. So my skulls look pretty good. I could definitely print these. I kind of like number four. So I'm gonna upscale number four. That means I'm gonna turn it into a larger image. And then once I get that larger image, I'm going to vary it. There's something called variation. And so then I'm gonna take that skull and get four more similar to that skull since I like the way that one looks. All right, so here's my skull. We are going to very strong. And you have two options. You can either very strong or very subtle. If you very subtle, it's not gonna change very much. Like it might just change a couple of lines or something like that. So I'm gonna see if I vary it strong, what that is going to do. So you can see that this is a variation strong based on the one that I upscaled earlier. And it didn't change it a whole lot, but you can see that they are kind of different. And I guess from here, hmm, I don't know, I'm kind of drawn towards this one, but I don't know how well like these parts are gonna print. I don't know, I like number three. We'll see if I can do something with that. Oh, that's gonna print fine. That looks freaking sweet. This is gonna be cool. All right, so we've got all of our images and now we're gonna use AI vector generator. So the one that I've been using is this one, Vectorizer AI. And you just drag your image in here and it turns it into a vector. Now the reason I need a vector is because I'm gonna be using Adobe Illustrator and I'm gonna need to separate all of the colors to be able to print it using my AMS. And I only, well, I have two AMSs, so I could essentially do eight colors, but I don't have the hub to connect to them. So I'm gonna have to limit it to only four colors, which is gonna be fine. But this software will let you choose how many colors you want. It'll separate the layers. And so then all I have to do is pull it from this software over into Illustrator, turn it into an SVG that I like, and then print it using my 3D software. So we pull it into vectorizer.ai, and it's gonna break this down into a vector image. Clearly way too too many colors. I can only print four at a time. So if we go up here, 
and we click three colors close to what I want. Let's do three colors because I'm going to pull this into Illustrator anyways, and I'm going to change all the colors there. Okay, so let's download this. We want SVG, fill shapes, stacked on top of each other, flattened, super fine, all of that. Okay, download, place this new pumpkin that we just got and ungroup. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to turn this into a green color. It's not going to stay that green color. And then I'm going to adjust some of these shapes so that it sits flat. And after some minor changes, this is what we end up with. So now we are going to export all of the pieces. Let me grab all of the orange, export it, make sure it's exporting as an SVG. Then you grab the green, grab all of the white pieces, export those, and then pump back. And that is all of the pieces of the pumpkin. Now we will come over here, go into Tinkercad, create a new design, and we will import. We will start with pump back. Okay, and now the size of my print bed is to around 240 millimeters for both of these. So I can't just change those because I'll have to do it proportionally for all of the shapes. So we want to change the scale percent that will affect the length and the width. So let's try 25 and that's actually pretty perfect. So now all of the shapes that I import will need to be 25%. All right, let's make this brown. Let's import pump orange. Make this 25% so that it matches the brown. I want this to be orange. And then import the green, 25, and make it green. And then now finally import pump white, 25%. And then now once this is in here, we will export each of these pieces individually. I don't export it all as one piece because then I'd have to paint each individual piece. And sometimes there's like jagged edges and it's just a lot of work to do that inside of Bamboo Lab. So I'll export each piece and then I can import them as a specific color. So now that this is all in here, what I wanna do is make sure that I can hang it somewhere. So I've created these pieces, which will allow me to hang it. I'll add one here, add one here, and then I'll add one up here just in case I want to hang just like a single string. So then I'll grab each of these, combine with the black or the brown, and then I will add one of these rods so that I have something to hang by. Select them all and the brown, combine, and now I am ready to export. All right, so I'll start by exporting the brown. Then I'll come in here to Bamboo Lab, create a new project, and I will import the brown. Once that is in here, I don't change the color yet because it makes it hard to see. Once that is in here, then I can go ahead and export each of these other pieces as STLs. And then I can come in here, add a part, load, and then each of these I will add. So this is gonna be the orange. I will go ahead and change that color. And the hardest thing for me is figuring out where the objects need to go. So what I've found is that I look at my base object and the center of it, the Z, is at two. So this one, the orange, its center is 0.5. So if I want this to be on top of the purple, I just make it 2.5 and then place it where I want it. But now I need to add a part. Let's add this one next because it's the green one. Again, it's at 0.5. I want it to be on top of the purple. So 2.5, let me change the color to green and then finally I will add the white. So now is when I'm going to change this color. Okay, make that brown. All right, and so that will be ready to print. All we need to do is get the filament loaded. And then we slice, now we wait four hours for this to be done and we will see what that looks like when it gets finished. The next thing I wanna do is the skull, vectorize it. We only want four colors. Now we download, we can pull it into here. All right, so this is good. Export the back. Let's grab all of the white. Export, we'll say this is skull gray. Export skull tan. And so now we come over here and we import each of the pieces. And then once every piece has been imported, we export each of the pieces just like we did with the pumpkin, add a new plate. We can go ahead and pull in the back and it's too big, but that's okay, we'll fix it in just a second. Now we need to add a part, add the white. All right, next I need to add 
add gray and then I'll add my final part which is going to be tan which I'll make this a tan color and now I just need to make sure that everything is lined up I need to change this black so that it looks right I'm going to rotate it Oh, it fits perfectly. All right, and so then we are gonna slice this. So it'll be done in about six hours, which means I will not be able to finish this today. I was hoping this would be like a one day project, but it's looking to be more like a two or three day project. We'll see if I get it done before Halloween. Fingers crossed. So I will see you guys in the morning. So these turned out amazing, especially the skull. I think this one just looks incredible. But my vision for down here is to have bats hanging from the ceiling. So using the same process that I did for the skull and the pumpkin, I went ahead and broke down the bat into printable layers. I pulled it into the slicer and now it's on the printer being printed. I'm printing multiple of these little bats so that I can hang them from the ceiling and I can bring my vision to life for what I saw this little Halloween project actually being. So as soon as those are done, we'll come back downstairs and we'll hang everything up and we'll see the final product for this project. done you can kind of see the ribbon behind this one like sort of hangs above but I think that'll be fine so it'll hang like this and then the skull the ribbon in the back so when it hangs it won't go above the top So now I'll just finish up these last five and then I'll take you downstairs and we'll hang them up and then we'll be done with this project. I love the way that my print shop turned out. I got it decorated for Halloween just in time. It's only a couple days away. When you're seeing this, it will probably be Halloween, but that's okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you even learned a thing or two about how you can use AI in your own 3D printing journey. Let me know down below if you plan to use AI or Midjourney or ChatGPT or anything like that. I love hearing from you guys. I will definitely be making another one of these videos for Thanksgiving and for Christmas because now that Halloween's over, I'm gonna have to redecorate and I've got some really cool ideas for how I want to decorate the print shop. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you would like to see me print besides holiday themed things and I'll see if I can make it happen. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I loved making this video for you guys. There's definitely more to come. Time for me to get back to work. I'll see you guys in the next one.